Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Vogt, joined by KSU underscore fan. As we get ready to preview the Cats and the Bears tonight from Bramlage Coliseum, seven o'clock tip off. Sorry to all of you folks that enjoy your linear television. Back to streaming, ESPN Plus. It's been a brutal week for you guys. I know the Chiefs on <laughs> Saturday, K State on Tuesday. And I got bad news for you. If you're not going to be in Manhattan for the game on Saturday, you've got to watch it on ESPN Plus as well. But once you get past all of that, there is actual basketball that will be played. It's a top 10 opponent coming to Bramlage Coliseum. And K-State fared well against Baylor last year. Jerome Tang facing Scott Drew won both games. And the game in Manhattan ended up, at the end, not really even being much of a contest. K-State put it away. The game in Waco went to overtime. And that was uh, kind of the start of last year's team taking off. And there were some similarities maybe to – the way last year started for the K-State basketball team and conference play to how K-State started this year where you get two pretty solid wins right out of the gate and you think about what K-State did. It looked like you were going to get that second road win in the same week, similar to what happened last year, but a heartbreaking loss by one point to Texas Tech where K-State just made mistake after mistake down the stretch and also some for the first 12 minutes of the game that set them behind but they can turn the page. It seems like this is a team that is playing better. And now you get an opportunity with Baylor, a team that they are 3-0, and one of only two teams in the league to be like that right now. But it has been a battle every single game they've played. It seems like they're just skating by. And K-State has an opportunity. They're not 3-0, and as that graphic says. I don't know why uh, that says it there. <laughs> don't worry about that. But they are a team that – very well could be ripe for the taking, and K-State needs a big win because they're yet to have a quad one win this season. Yeah, this is a big game. It's it's the only stretch, only one of two stretches where you have two home games back-to-back in the league, which is, you know, you got to take advantage of those times when you have home games. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say most people would say you need to leave, win at least seven home games, maybe eight, to put yourself in a good spot for the NCAA tournament unless you steal a bunch of road games and then – you know, your margin for error drops after that loss Saturday to Texas Tech. So top 10 team, too, you're going to get attention if you get a win. Um, people are going to talk about you. K-State really hasn't had that type of win this year. Uh, a little bit of attention after the Villanova win, I think. Um, but other than that, nationally, you, you, you haven't heard K-State talked about. You don't see them on uh, – you see them as kind of a next four out team in most uh, bracketologies right now. So you get a win in this one, you, you're going to get – yourself probably firmly in most of those bracketologies and, and positive attention going into a very winnable game on Saturday. Well, and, and thinking about Baylor and them coming in and what K-State has here, I talked about how they've kind of got off to a, a – I don't know if it's a slow start, but they might be playing more along the lines of what they should. They played phenomenal in the non-conference outside of the Michigan State game, which was really, really bad for them but they shot the ball like crazy. That has dipped since conference play began. If you go and look, Baylor's a team that's shooting still over 42% from three on the season. But in Big 12 play, they're under 30%, and they're one of the bottom five teams in the league through these three games. Should K-State, who we know has been a good defensive team, and they just held Texas Tech to their worst shooting night of the season from three, is this a game where like Baylor is due, or can K-State's defense kind of help contribute to – continuing Baylor's, I guess, slow start to Big 12 play in terms of their shooting? I do think Baylor, uh, K-State can contribute to keeping Baylor down, although, you know, K-State has struggled, especially in first half of games against three-point shots all season long. So that that is a slight concern. But it's also, um, I think there's a stat guy I followed named Will Warren who has pointed out teams that have shot 40% or better in November and December, since the new three-point line came into effect a few years ago, most of those teams drop five, six percent during the season because it's just hard to maintain with the three-point line where it's at now, shooting that level of of, of a percentage from three-point land. So you know Baylor's almost at forty-four percent right now. They were at forty-four percent before a couple bad games in league play from three. So this is not a team that's probably going to shoot that well all season long. And it's really their biggest strength on their team is shooting threes. They're a pretty good offense rebounding team too. Um, but other than that, they're not dominant in anything, but they're pretty good at everything. So it's, it's one of those weird 
uh, teams, and, and then you know we'll talk about their defense a little bit. Their defense is not where it has been um, for much of the last eight years under Scott Drew. Well, thinking about their defense and what their defense is going to face tonight, K-State has kind of been the inverse of Baylor season where – Baylor, really good shooting in the non-con. They struggled from three in Big 12 play. I mean, I think if you go and watch their their game against Oklahoma State, I think they only hit one three in regulation. Um, not sure. They may have added a couple in overtime where they barely won in Stillwater against what is either the worst or the second worst team in the Big 12 right now, it would appear. K-State, on the other hand, they were below 30% on, on the year in non-conference play, and they have shot it better since they started playing Big 12 games, and that includes uh, going for like 43% against Texas Tech over the weekend. Now they're, I think, close to 38% in conference games only. Yeah. This team is probably not bad enough shooting the basketball to be mm -hmm. under 30% for the entirety of the year. They're also not going to be like 43% consistently like they were against Texas Tech. But where is the real level for this K-State team shooting the basketball? Because – Tyler Perry is very streaky, and that should be his skill set. Arthur Kaluma has been pretty good from three this year. And Cam Carter, the shot doesn't look terrible. He gets good looks, but he's going to fluctuate between 30 to 33%, and that's probably where he's going to peak out at. So, I mean, what what is a realistic expectation for K-State shooting the ball in this game against Baylor and then moving forward? Yeah, I, I think it's a team that can shoot toward the mid-30s from three. For the for the Big 12 season, which which would be a big step to go from 30 percent to mid 30s, like you said, Kalum is shooting at the best right now. Um, Perry, you know, was had a pretty good game. You'll take four for 11 most nights from him, and then Cam had one of his best three point shooting games of the season. The big three right now shooting around 32 percent combined. The big three, what I'm calling them, and they shoot you know, most of our three-point shots, almost 75% uh, of them. So those three are going to dictate the shooting of the team pretty much. And if they make shots, um, the team's going to make shots. So um, I think the, the wild card is Perry because he's the guy that can be streaky. You know, he, he missed a shot, made four in a row, and then missed six and more in, in the Texas Tech game. So you'd hope you, you avoid those stretches where he misses six in a row. I mean, honestly, if he makes one three in the second half, that's a pretty good looks. K State probably wins that game. I mean, yeah. it's, it's probably that simple. And he had some pretty good looks from three. So to me, that's that's gonna be the key. But you know, I, I go back to K State's key is getting shots at the rim and getting to the free throw line. Um, I think the target I would put is 20 for each. If you can get 20 shots at the rim for K State and 20 free throws, uh, they're gonna win most games. Um, against Texas Tech, they had eleven shots at the rim and seven free throws. Pretty good recipe for losing on the road. Uh, and you still almost won that game. So that's what I'm going to look for. You do have to make those threes, but K-State's strength is, you know, getting it inside. Uh, Cam and Kaluma are both pretty good at getting to the rim. And then you got a couple big guys that are pretty good at scoring at the rim if you can get them the ball. And then the, the free throws show that you're attacking and trying to get to the rim, I think, is a pretty good indicator. And, you know, K-State only shooting seven free throws against Tech was was pretty disappointing. Where 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 does Baylor come into this? I mean, I, a matchup wise, where would you you find some strengths and weaknesses for K State in this game? To where I mean, we both said it on Sunday. We both feel like K State can win this game and probably does. It just seems like Baylor is a team that you can get. But I mean, where where is it that K State can expose Baylor? And then you know, on the other side, where does K State need to be aware that Baylor might be able to get them? Yeah, the, the going back to the rim rate. Um, Baylor's defense is kind of odd because th they're really good at not letting you get to the rim. Um, I think their their defense is number nine in the country at percentage of shots at the rim against them, 28%. But when you get to the rim, you make it. They're 361st in the country in percentage allowed at the rim, almost 70%. So when they when teams do get in the, in the lane against them and get to the rim, they make shots and they're not very contested. Um, they got the one big guy, the freshman, that's pretty good around the rim. But other than that, they're not a big rim protecting team. Um, so, so I'd say that's one. Um, they also defensively, they're kind of funny because they're 58th, um, but they're outside the top 100 in all four of what I consider the four factors: effective field goal percentage, 
uh, turnover rate forced, offense rebounding rate allowed, and free throw rate allowed. So uh, they're not dominant in any single defensive category, but they're decent at a lot of them. Um, their best straight is teams only shoot 29.6% from them, three against them. So they're decent there, but sometimes that's kind of a luck factor as well. Um, and like opponent dependent. I mean, it does you know, depend on who you, so. who you face. Yeah. And, and both losses, they've had two losses on the season, both losses. Um, two things to look at is their, their turnover rate on offense was over 20%. So they take a decent care of the ball, but if you can turn them over, you can beat them. And both losses, they allowed a free throw rate of 55%. So they allowed almost 28, 29 free throws in each of those two games in their two losses. So those are two, again, goes back to what one of K-State's strengths. Um, so, so I'd say that. One, one thing that concerns me with the defense is they force you to take a lot of two-point jump shots. And K-State is uh, 361st in the country in making those. So Hopefully we don't get in a two point jump shot shooting contest against them because we're not we're going to lose if that's the case. I was going to say, and K State loves to take them, but as we've discussed, K State doesn't necessarily love to take them. They just yeah. love to be bad at making they, them. They, they, yeah, our, our rate of taking them is actually pretty good. It's in the bottom half of the country, but man, we don't make them. And and the the selection of when to take them yeah. certainly is uh, probably one of the worst in the league. So uh, look, I. I was a, not totally surprised, but when I looked this morning and Baylor shows up as only a one-and-a-half-point favorite, obviously there are a lot of people that feel uh, the same way as we do, that this could and should probably be a close game. And, I mean, the Ken Palm, Ken Palm had it at 73-70 Baylor. And so normally the, the the sports books and Ken Palm are pretty much identical. You can give it a half point either, either way. I think it is significant that it's one-and-a-half points lower in this game. So. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I, I think K State wins this. Just they they are playing far better than what we saw at any point in the non conference. Even you know the Villanova game that was a big win that they got there. But it feels like these first three games, outside of you know a handful of chunks of time in the Texas Tech game, but they still did some really good things there. They are playing better than what we've seen, and and this feels like uh, a bit of a different team. And and so I, I'm expecting K State to be able to get it done. And you know we. We've talked about this too. Like, obviously, we think it's going to be a good crowd tonight. Students are all back and they've had all day to do nothing except get ready for the game since classes were canceled. And Baylor is going on the road now. And like you said, they've only played what one road game this one year. It was at game. it was at Oklahoma State. Yeah. Because uh, they played Michigan State in Detroit and they played Duke. Was that New York? I think that they played them in. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it, we know Stillwater is not the most frightening place to go and play, and they struggled there. So you go on the road, you have probably weird travel because of the weather, and obviously Scott Drew is a guy that uh, has not beaten Jerome Tang yet in two tries. It's not many, but it's it's worth noting. So uh, I'll ask you here, K-State is to win the game tonight. you got to give me your MVP and a prediction. Yeah, I would uh... – I, I do, I do, I pick K State to win it. I think K State will win it because of a lot of the factors you said. It's because you uh, always pick K State to win. I do almost always pick K State to win it, um, but I, I, I think um, for this, I think this is an Arthur Kaluma game to break out in. Um, he he has played well lately, but he, he hasn't had that super breakout game. I think he's a guy that can take advantage of of uh, the Baylor defense, get to the rim a little bit more. Um, and hopefully, you know, get he's been shooting well from three, so we need to get Kaluma some good shots from three, especially from the left wing where he's shooting over 40% um, on the year from three. So I'd say he'd be my key. Um, I think I picked 75-71 cats as my final score, and I think it's probably going to be a game that gets into the 70s. Neither team is a super high-paced team, but I think it's going to be a pretty offensively efficient game for both teams. That sounds that sounds probably uh, pretty accurate there. I, I, I think Kaluma is a good pick. I would like to see him be a little bit more assertive, and yeah. part of that is the team has to get him more involved as well. Yeah. I mean, that was something we talked about on Sunday, but he what he didn't get many shots off at one all shot in the second the last, half. One shot the last fifteen minutes of the game. 
Yeah, that just you, you can't have that when there's a legitimate case to be made that he's the most talented guy on this team. And even if you know his position, it makes it a little bit tougher to get him looks. You know, he doesn't have the ball consistently. He has shown the ability to create for himself, and uh, I think you got to force feed him. I, I just I think Tyler Perry is so crucial to all this because obviously we know Baylor can shoot, and there's a chance that they do break out tonight. And you're going to have to have somebody to be able to match that. And I, we saw some steps in the right direction. Two of the last three games, he has had that stretch where you go, that is the Tyler Perry we were promised. You need to see that either stretch out for a longer period of the game or, like you said, just make one or two when things aren't going the best or something. You know, you can have that streaky stretch, but then just one time throw one in when we need it in the second half, and, and that gives you an opportunity. I, so I think he's going to be – I mean, in games that he shoots really well this year, I, I think K-State's going to have a tough time losing those games because they are so good everywhere else. And defensively, they can make life pretty miserable for their opponents. So I do think they win tonight because I, I think that they are playing better. Baylor, even though they could bust out and have that big game because they're due for that as well, a team playing as many close games and as scary as it's been for them, especially at home and then against the worst team in the league, you're due for a loss. And you're coming to a place that, should be just as tough as what K-State faced in Lubbock on Saturday and what Houston went and saw in Ames last week. That's the expectation for Bramlage Coliseum, and I think it does get the better of Baylor tonight because uh, K-State seems to to have a, a good thing going for him right now. So we'll see how it plays out, but I'm taking the Cats as well, and we'll have full coverage after the game over on kstateonline.com. Head over there, add on three, get signed up if you're not follow everything there and then also plenty of post game coverage on the YouTube page as well we'll have the instant reaction and then videos from coach Tang and the players after the game win or lose for the cats as they get ready to have their second home big 12 game of the season so for KSU underscore fan I'm Mason Voth thank you for watching K-State online